Today is April 4th, 2017, and that means it's Equal Pay Day. It was started by the National Committee on Pay Equality back in 1996 to highlight the gap between men and women's wages. Nearly half of G20 women think that they don't have the same career potential as men. This is why we did the poll, because you have a lot of, type of statistics about women working, about their heart. The 69th World News Media Congress in Durban has thrown the spotlight on issues affecting women working in the media. One of the pressing challenges which has come to the fore is online harassment. Lead is the woman who will be leading General Motors, Mary Barra. She'll be making the lead from Executive Vice President to CEO in January. She'll also be shattering a glass ceiling that has loomed over Detroit for decades. It was a great night last night. In fact, it was really a history-making evening for all of the women as Catherine Bigelow became the first woman to win Best Director, of course, for the powerful Iraq war drama, The Hurt Locker. Well, the time has come. <laughs> Catherine Bigelow! History, do you understand the history that was made tonight? Well, um, I understand it, but I only can hope that I'm, this is the first of many, and that, uh, you know, it can be useful for other women who are following their dream and have to be as tenacious as humanly possible to achieve that. I worked at National Geographic from 1998 to around 2011. When I left, I was a vice president. He had since been promoted to vice president. There was a senior vice president who was a female above us who had recently been promoted. The senior vice president and I were, were let go at the same time. And when we were both let go, we found out that even though he'd only worked there four years to my 14, he was making 40% more than I was. And he was making more than the female senior vice president who'd been working there a decade. When I started at National Geographic, I'll add, I was told, prepare to be a coordinator for five years, and then if you're lucky, you'll get one of the five or six coveted associate producer roles. And then if you're lucky, um, after five or six years in that role, maybe you'll get a producer role, but only one person has managed to work their way up in the history of the organization. When I was a vice president at National Geographic, I was a vice president for my last four years there in development. There was one opportunity um, to go and pitch the new leadership. They, they came from Fox. And my boss, who was the executive vice president, instead of taking me to pitch my ideas, took a man under me, a director. And I raised my hand and I said, why is he going to pitch my ideas? These are ones that I worked on. And her response was, they respond better to men. former co-worker from Channel 10 um, told me about a job here at Scripps. Um, Scripps is now Discovery, but at Scripps. So I put in for the job and I got called for an interview immediately and I came in and then I never heard anything and just nothing. And it was just so depressing, but I kept on, I kept on and then in that time, I did not have a real great relationship with our sports anchor. He, had, you know, cussed at me in front of the whole newsroom. He things that men would not do to other men. But, you know, he was trying to pawn work off on me, and you know, cussed me out in front of the whole newsroom. One time, tripped, threw an entire basket of tapes at me. Ah, uh, that was great. Just all this stuff where I was just absolutely sick of working there. Out of the blue, I get a phone call from Scripps. And they said, I mean, this is maybe six to eight months after I had interviewed. And they said, hey, we really liked you last time, but we chose somebody else, but we have another opening. Would you like to come in and interview for it again? And I was, of course. And I got the job. But I don't, I have heard that if I had not had this personal recommendation from the person who um, I worked with before, and I'm currently, you know, was working here now, um, 
that they wouldn't have, have hired me. And I'll say why is because there are no women in the department. Basically, it was like they needed him to vouch for me, like that I was not gonna be a problem, <laughs> so that I was not gonna, you know, bust up their boys' party. And um, that's sort of been a theme of my career, is like, it's always expected that when you work in technology and you're a woman, that you're gonna be one of the guys. After working in the news for three to four years, I decided I wanted to transition to uh, a different side of television production. And uh, that was where I went behind the camera and started pursuing management positions. I started entry level at my first job after news reporting um, for uh, jewelry television. And um, basically, I worked my way up from I was a production assistant. And then after being there not too long, a supervisor position had opened up and I had applied for it. And I was fortunate to get the position. And then after that, I just worked my way up to a management position. Because I was young, I was in my mid-20s, I think I was around 24 when I'd started um, that supervisor position and then about six months to a year later promoted to the production manager position. And so I was overseeing a staff of three shifts. We had first, second, and third because it's around the clock 24-7. And so I was overseeing a staff of approximately 40 to 50 people that all reported directly to me and I was probably the youngest. <laughs> and so it was awkward in the beginning because you question yourself. I would lay in bed at night and just, if I bit off more than I can chew, what am I doing? I had to have the confidence in myself that I knew what I was doing. I knew I was capable of doing the job. I just needed to not question myself. And I was lucky that I had such a strong mentor, my boss, that obviously saw it in me as well that I was capable of doing the position. But I think a combination of being a female and young and taking on a management position, you know, it was definitely a challenge. When I was eight, I was confused at being called bossy because I wanted to direct the plays that we would put on for our parents, but the boys were not. When at 14, I started to be sexualized by certain elements of the media. No country in the world can yet say that they have achieved gender equality. To every woman who gave birth, right. to every taxpayer and citizen of this nation, we have fought for everybody else's equal rights. It's our time to have wage equality once and for all, and equal rights for women in the United States. And I'm especially proud and inspired by all the women who have felt strong enough and empowered enough to speak up and share their personal stories. Each of us in this room are celebrated because of the stories that we tell. And this year, we became the story. You know, I, I do see women getting more opportunities in the next five to ten years, and it, it's not because necessarily it's the right thing to do. I mean, great, if people are doing it because it's the right thing to do and they're becoming more aware, great. I think it's because these organizations are going to be scared. They're seeing all these lawsuits that are coming out, and they're going to do it because they don't want to be blacklisted because social media is so powerful these days and they've seen the power of social media if it comes out that they haven't given women equal treatment, they haven't given women equal opportunities. I'm so excited to see some changes in this industry. For sure, um, over the last five years, we have seen more and more interest in the television production industry from females. You do hear in the past a lot of director position, producer positions, and a, a lot of um, males going for those positions. And I think um, in the last five years or so, a lot of women have really started to jump into those roles. And um, a lot of women have really done excellent jobs jumping into those roles and are starting to do a lot more in production. And I think it's very exciting. The thing that I, I, I see and I admire so much about the millennial generation is ask for it. You're always 
asking for it. And that was a big piece of advice that, that I have received and that I've also given is that if you want something, nobody knows until you ask for it. I didn't get this office by sitting in or around and just hoping that somebody noticed me and also not being beholden to a five or ten year plan. The media landscape changes every six months. Our technology changes every six months. It's very hard to stay on top of that. So to say, oh, this is what it's going to look like in ten years. This is what my career is going to look like in five years. Never in my life thought I would be doing this. So always be open to it. And that's the thing is I feel like um, millennials are very much seeing, okay, are identifying the gaps and filling those gaps. Um, my generation's not super great at that. We're, we're awesome at putting our heads down and doing the work. I think that as millennials start um, getting out into the industry, especially in the news industry, we'll see those gender and race disparities kind of break down. Um, it, that's definitely something I think millennials care about. Um, and I think that when you just look at the sheer number of people who are interested in journalism as of now, it's majority female, um, which is very different than the way that it used to be. In the 70s and the 80s, it wasn't very common for you to see a female reporter or a female news anchor. You know, that's kind of when things started changing. Now, most of your main anchors and most of your, you know, a lot of your great reporters are females, and so that the industry is changing. It's a little intimidating uh, applying to work at places that are very male dominated because you wonder if you're going to be, if you're going to be judged as an equal, you also have to kind of worry about how your appearance plays into it, which kind of is crappy. If you don't look a certain way or if you don't appear a certain way, then sometimes I feel like that can be a disadvantage if it's like a male hiring manager or something like that. I do think that in this industry, it's harder for women to be successful. Um, there's a lot of things um, that can hold you back um, in your professional career, whether it be your looks, um, your age, your weight. Um, it, women are aged out of the TV industry a lot faster than men are. Just being good at your job isn't good enough when you're a woman um, in this industry. You have to look the part. Um, you have to look professional and put together all the time and not just that you know people expect women to look Beautiful constantly if you're on TV, you know if you just look average people aren't gonna like that You know and I, that's not the same standard that there is for a man in the same position Going into the workforce as a young female it has been kind of inspiring to watch all of these other women um, Going into this field and taking on these leading roles because it's definitely made me feel like you know, if they can do it, I can for sure do it, and it's definitely fueled the passion a lot more, and it's it's definitely encouraging to see this transition in this industry, which is completely different than it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, where it was so male-dominated, and all the CEE, CEE roles that were being taken were being filled by males, or the leading anchors at night were all male, so it's been very comforting to see this transition happen, and I'm like super excited to go into the workforce at this time because of it. My advice um, to other young women that are pursuing management positions and leadership positions in the television production industry is really just, it's all about your confidence. It is all about having the heart, having the passion. You have to love this business, they say, to work in this industry because it is tough. Um, our television production company here, like most others, is very fast paced. You have to be on your toes, you have to be outgoing. We all wear several hats and do more than one job. But if you're that individual that is outgoing, that is willing to jump in and help whenever needed, um, check your work, check it again, um, do everything to the best of your ability and um, really be organized. And um, like I said, you just want to impress your bosses. There were really challenging shoots too. Um, that I think traditionally they wouldn't have sent women on. When I started, I was coming straight out of the Peace Corps and I had experience living and working in West Africa and that was a real asset, but I also had to like, raise my hand and say, yes, I am willing to go in camp in the middle of the Congo for three weeks uh, to make them know that 
this isn't a role that just a man can handle. I'm willing to be out there with 30 other men, including all the porters and the crew and talent and whatnot. I'm super happy to like give my employees exposure to other areas of the business, you know, making connections or making phone calls. Like, find somebody that will advocate for you. If it's not your manager, then you know, find a find a person that you respect in another department and ask them for advice. I'm not afraid to ask anybody for anything. <laughs> That's how you, that's how you get what you want, so.